Okay, are you all ready for an emotional roller coaster? Because that's what we're about to go on. And some of you may have seen this video on another channel, but I guarantee you, you have not seen all three videos start to finish with all of the additional information I was able to pull up. If you have, please let me know because there's another me out there. Just kidding. I this this whole case has I've I've thrown things, I've cried, I've it, it's this case is horrible. <laughs> it's all over the place. I don't even have words. I don't even know how to describe it. So please watch it till the end because even though there's some boring parts, I know you can you can leave a comment and tell me how horrible the boring parts are. I couldn't take out the boring parts because they kind of led up to the end and you are not going to believe what happens in the end. You really aren't. It's, <laughs> there really is a twist at the end. It's unbelievable. It, it had me absolutely shocked. And please take a moment, hit the like and subscribe button. Help me get back in the algorithm because I have the lowest views I have had since I started this channel and it is painful. Everybody forgot about me. Thank you so much for your support and let's go to court. Are you uh, Wendy Scott? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Scott, formal charges have been filed against you by the county attorney's office for kidnapping, mistreatment of a dependent adult, criminal threat, aggravated robbery, theft, and resisting or interfering with law enforcement. The most serious offense, actually you have two of them, two level three person felonies. It's alleged in count one that on or about the 20th day of July, 2024 in Butler County, Kansas, that you did then and there unlawfully take or confine a person to wit Beverly Jean Zilke, uh, accomplished by force or theft or deception with the intent to facilitate uh, flight or commission of a crime uh, to it, aggravated robbery. It's a violation of law under KSA 21-5408A2. In count two, you're charged that on or about the 20th day of July, 2024, that you did knowingly inflict physical injury or unreasonable confinement or punishment upon a dependent adult or an elder person to wit, Beverly Jean Zilke, Z-I-E-L-K-E. That's what's known as mistreatment of a dependent adult or elder it is a level five person felony if convicted. The sentencing range is anywhere from 31 months up to 136 months with the Department of Corrections, depending on your history and a $300,000 fine. On the level three charges of robbery, aggravated robbery and kidnapping, the sentencing range is 55 months up to 247 months with the Department of Corrections, depending on your criminal history. Uh, if convicted, any level three offenses are presumptive prison and up to a $500,000 fine. Count three is a level nine, so it's on the lower end of the grid Severity levels are 1 through 10, 1 being the highest, 10 being the lowest. A level 9 offense is 5 months up to 17 months with the Department of Corrections. It's alleged that on or about the 20th day of July 2024, you threatened to commit violence against Beverly Jean Zilke. The aggravated robbery alleges that you unlawfully and knowingly took a gray 2024 Nissan Altima 
from the person or presence or house of Beverly Jean Zilke by force or threat of bodily harm. You threatened to shoot her and drug drag her from no. the causing injury. Um, and that you inflicted bodily harm in the course of said robbery. So that's why it's charged as an aggravated robbery. It carries sentences as I indicated of 55 months up to 247 months with the Department of Corrections. Then it's also alleged on the 20th day of July that you did unlawfully obtain or exert unauthorized control over um, Ms. Zilke's purse, the contents, and her small dog, Chloe, um, when she basically didn't want you to, she didn't give you um, permission. I have none of this, smell. I have none of this. I just basically talked to a detective. I have okay. none of this stuff. Okay. Count just, six says that you falsely reported to law enforcement um, false information to influence or impede or obstruct an officer's official duty or investigation. That, if convicted, that's a level nine felony as well, five months to 17 months with the Department of Corrections. The theft is a misdemeanor if convicted of up to one year and a $2,500 fine. The rest are all felonies. Judge Ricky is your assigned judge. He has established a court date for you of August 12th at 2.30. What is, what is the recommended bond? Judge, beyond just the level of charges, the defendant is most definitely a C, but possibly a B on the grid. The recommendation will be 100,000 cash, Sherry. Maybe one day we can get JR Jr. to do a uh, grid explanation for us. But in the meantime, you're stuck with me. Most states have gone to a more complex sentencing gu guideline process where you don't just get a sentence no matter what, it takes into account your criminal history and other factors. And in this case, it's taking into account all of the charges that she has and piling them in in order to put her up into higher letter categories. The higher the letter, higher meaning higher in the alphabet, ABC, the higher the sentence, longer the sentence that you're going to be in, the higher the number, the longer the sentence and the more severe of the charge that you're in. So as you can see, the light blue squares are the prison sentences, the yellow are probation sentences, and those purple are called border boxes where eh, you might get lucky. Sir, I just, I just personally talked to the detective. He said he was going to talk to the DA. I was not... This, okay. I, was, I, I don't want you saying anything. I want you to talk to an attorney, please. I'm going to go ahead since such a high bond has been requested and you have what's reportedly a, uh, a fairly high criminal history. Um, I'm going to appoint counsel for you. Um, Jim Watts is who you'll start with. Um, if there are problems or he has a conflict or something, he can find an attorney or ask me to appoint a Wichita attorney. But you're gonna start with Jim Watts and he does come to the jail every week. Before I set your bond, the request is 100,000. I have to set it, well, I typically set it relatively high whenever a case is presumptive prison. And um, the nature of these offenses uh, generally warrant a relatively high bond to give bondsmen an incentive to find you if you fail to appear for court. So um, is there anything that you'd like to say about your bond? Not about the case itself, but just the bond. And the things I like to know I promise, are- I just need a little help fighting for my kids. I don't know this. 
I basically just gave them all the information they need. I promise you, I was laced. I've been in intensive care for five days. I was okay. laced with a drug that, that not doing nothing. I was just, my name is Cesar. I'm fighting for my kids. I would have never did nothing like this to somebody. I promise you. Okay. Tell me I how. I didn't fight well, for my kids. I promise you, I would not. I was not a runner in any of that. How old are I'm, you? I am 40, 40 years old. I have a chronic okay. illness where I have to be in hospital. I'll, I'll fight for my life. I just want to know the one. Okay. Where where do you live? In El Dorado? No, I live in Wichita, Kansas. My daughter's fighting brain cancer. She, I'm, I'm a mother. I, I was basically late. I don't even know what's going on. Okay. Do you have a job somewhere? I do work. Where do you work? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I work for Burger King. I'm a manager there, ma'am. I'm not no violent person. Everything I do, I have to do independently through my kids and everything. I'm not no uh, person be on the street. I was late. I was at the scene. I was sitting I was in the car and was forced to drive this car off because they were all on drugs. Okay. Either I or I Okay. I don't want you to talk about the case. I have a I court date Friday see. for my kids. If I'm not at that court date on Friday, they're going to terminate my rights. I got two little boys in state custody that I'm fighting for. I have a daughter with brain cancer. Okay. You need to write that all down for the jail because they can try to get a, you logged into a Zoom hearing so that you can appear for that if you don't make <laughs> What about the, the man talking to the DA telling them that I had nothing to do with this? I don't know anything about that. I just I just I, talked to a dude. I just talked to a detective. He said he's talking to the DA. Okay. His name was what, Ch That's his name why was I got that's why and I, I'm going to tell Jim Watts, we're going to send him a message to get out to the jail to see you as soon as possible. Right now, I am going to set the bond at 100000 cash or surety. Jim Watts can file a request for this case to be heard in front of Judge Ricky sooner. How much money uh, do I need to get out of here? But right now, um, if you are a criminal history B and you're charged with a level three, um, there's enough uh, allegations here and information for me to be concerned that we need a significant bond to secure your attendance. All right, I've set a bond. I've given you an attorney. You have a judge assigned. I've given you a court date. Is there anything else Counsel? No, Your Honor. Okay. What time is that uh, court on August 12th? Um, it should be. Yes, August 12th at 2.30. Um, Mr. Canfield, is there a is there an affidavit that's filed in Ms. Scott's case? Yes, there is. Okay. Amy, can you um, see that I get a copy and Judge Ricky gets a copy of that? Yes. And Judge I'm gonna turn you right gets here. a copy. Okay, thank you. I think I spent longer compiling Wendy's criminal history than I did compiling this video. It was a lot to go through to try and figure out what was going on because it was all over the place. And Nebraska charges you $15 for one search, whether you get results or not. I mean, why do you have to pay if you don't get results? Really? Like that search cost them anything? Oh, very frustrating. Just to give you an idea, she has um, pages of charges. Lots of them are related to um, um, vehicles, not having registration, not having driver's license. I, I'm not sure she's ever had a driver's license. She has so many failure to appears 
thefts, driving without a license, failure to appear, noise complaints, failure to appear, failure to appear, failure to appear, speeding, 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 failure to appear, no driver's license, theft, no driver's license. That's all in Omaha. In Iowa, she has no driver's license. She didn't pay it. And then she got three speeding tickets. Um, then she has two pretty decent ones in Kansas from 2020. And it looks like she kind of went on a, a bender um, a couple days apart. The first one, she was charged with fleeing, interference with law enforcement by providing false police report, driving while a habitual offender, no insurance speeding, no seatbelt. She received jail 12 months and then 12 months probation following that. And that happened in 2020 in Brown County, Kansas. Then she was sentenced right around the same time in, in Jackson County, Kansas for fleeing and eluding by reckless driving, aggravated battery, knowingly using a weapon to cause great bodily harm, intentional, intentionally obstructing by resisting law enforcement, criminal damage to property, 1,000 to 25,000, and driving without a license, two or more offenses. And she received 20 months in jail, followed by a year of probation on that. Her probation was up 1022. By that point, she had not paid her fines and costs and her probation was revoked. She was going to jail and somehow she came up with the money. So she's not exactly a little Miss Sunshine. I, I was feeling a lot of sympathy, then it kind of went away. Let's see how the rest of this plays out. Okay. Who is this individual that just sat down at the jail Zoom location? Wendy Scott. Your case, Mr. Watts? It is, Your Honor, and I will tell the court I received the discovery, and at this point, the place is quite considerable. I've been, I got it late Friday uh, afternoon. I've been reading through some of it this morning, but as Your Honor is well aware, because I've been in front of Your Honor most of the day, I've not had a lot of time to uh, read through this case. Okay. I just don't want Ms. Scott compromised. Is she being held solely as a result of this case? As far as I know, Your Honor. All right. This is the state of Kansas versus Wendy Scott. It is case 24 CR 346. Ms. Scott appearing from the jail Zoom location. James Watts is defense counsel. Amber Norris for the state. Um, in an abundance of caution, I'm inclined to set this for an entry hearing. Again, I... I'm already uh, kind of getting these dates out there. I don't want to have any further delay in establishment of an actual evidentiary hearing date. So the court will go ahead and establish one now because it is going to be out of ways as it is. What do you mean by that? You can request a sooner setting if there's some reason to do so, Mr. Watts. Right, I'm looking at Wednesday, October the 30th. October 30, Your Honor. Uh, yes, I'm looking to see how many felonies we have here. I'm going to establish another two-hour setting for this one as well. Starting at 1 o'clock on Wednesday, October 30. Yes, sir. So Wendy Scott's evidentiary preliminary hearing is set on the calendar for Wednesday, October the 30th. 1 o'clock p.m. This point that's contemplated to be a Zoom docket. October 30th, 1 o'clock, two hour setting. All right, uh, Ms. Norris, is there anything further we need to address from the state's perspective on this case? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Watts, no. anything further at this time? There is, Your Honor. My client would ask to be take up the matter of bond. It's my understanding that she is currently being held on a hundred thousand dollar bond, which is obviously well beyond her ability to have any hope to to meet. Um, and I suspect we're set with the intention of being it well beyond she having any hope to meet. Um, she has three children. Two of them are are. Uh, at home, one their 18-year-old daughter is currently watching another child. Uh, she's from Nebraska, but she's been living in Wichita for the last three years. She was working at Breakthrough, which is an assistant program for vets, um, has been doing working there for a year doing support for disabled vets. Um, Judge... It sounds like... Now, I, I get into that. She has a residence in Sedgwick County near, in the area. 
she has children in the area that are dependent upon her. And as I said, it appears that she has an 18 year old daughter that's currently taking care of a younger daughter. She's at 30 in Wichita. Um, we would ask that a bond be set that she has a chance to make. And I understand the, the purpose of bond. Purpose of bond is to assure her appearance. Purpose of bond is not to make sure someone is held uh, so they can't get out. And when we set $100,000 bonds, that's typically the reason why we set them, is to make sure they can't get out. Um, judge, I think a bond in this case that might be appropriate would be in the fifteen dollars to $20,000 range rather than a $100,000 range. State's response, Ms. Norris? Your Honor, we did request $100,000 uh, based on her criminal history. She's likely a B on the grid, so which makes her presumptive prison. Uh, she's for sure a C uh, based on the history that we could see. Uh, but the nature and circumstance of this crime are actually you know, pretty significant in that they stole from an injured an 86-year-old woman, basically from her home, left her on the side of the road and took her, took her dog. Um, she was found, flock puts her, this individual in the car, the flock, um, systems where they take photographs of vehicles and license plates, put her in the car, the stolen car. She makes some admissions, but she has several flea and eludes. She has an aggravated battery LEO. Uh, multiple forgeries, Where lots of shoplifting, uh, false informations, obstruction, tampering with evidence. Is this from Nebraska or this is for Kansas? I've had these cases are from like, I could say probably 20 years back. And your honor, her felony, her fleeing eludes are from 2020. Um, she, a lot of this stuff is from Nebraska and it starts in 2004 and doesn't stop till 2017. And which I think might've been when she moved here. And then she also has some, uh, felonies, uh, theft issues in 2015 from the state of Iowa. Um, she only has a Kansas ID. I don't believe she has a legitimate driver's license. Um, I, I, the, the bond seemed appropriate based on the types of offenses that we're talking about here. Uh, the vulnerability of the of this particular victim, her own criminal history puts her basically in a presumptive prison. She's not originally from here. Um, she has criminal history in three different states. Your Honor, it, can you please just please? I got hanging at ECF, and I'm trying to find you get my baby. I promise you, I'm not going to run. <laughs> I promise. I promise. I'm not here just to be, I, I did not do this. I was told to cooperate with the situation and I would get out of this. That detective lied to me. He lied to me, completely lied to me. I didn't even know when I was questioned. I didn't even know when I was, uh, I see you. I was laced. Hey. Nobody's taking none of this in consideration. Wendy, 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 please don't say anything else. This court uh, had the opportunity to review at least some of the facts of this case through its review of a prior affidavit supporting a warrant. I am familiar with the facts and circumstances of this case as outlined, I think, very appropriately by Ms. Norris here on the record. I will just note that the charges in this case include aggravated robbery and kidnapping, both level three felonies, which would make these presumptive prison offenses in and of themselves regardless of criminal history. And of course, obviously the criminal history is defendant also gives this court uh, some reason to pause. Ms. Norris, I'm, I'm curious, was the small dog Chloe ever recovered? Not that I've heard of yet, Your Honor. Hmm. Tragic. The circumstances of this case are flagrant and indeed tragic in regards to the uh, elderly victim in this case. Uh, the court does find that there is a public safety component to the review of any bond situation. She is a considerable run risk due to her criminal history and the fact that she's facing prison if convicted of one or more of these charges. She's also got clean elude in her record, avoiding law enforcement and responsibility. 
And therefore, the court does believe that the bond is appropriately set, and the court will leave it where set at $100,000 cash or professional surety required. If she makes that bond, she will be restricted to the territory of Butler and Sedgwick County, Kansas only, and will be required to wear an electronic monitoring device to monitor her location. But the amount of the bond and type of bond remains the same. The request for modification is denied at this time. I believe that was the last matter to be taken up regarding the Scott matter. Ms. Scott, I'm not going to grant any, any modification of your bond. If there's nothing further at this time, the Wendy Scott matter is in recess and we'll move on to another matter on the docket. Mr. James, is there a way you could come and talk to me? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I can. Number 2024, CR 346, Amber Norris appears for the state of Kansas. James Watts is defense counsel. Wendy Scott appears at the Butler County Jail Zoom location. This matter comes before the court at this time for evidentiary preliminary hearing. I trust the state's ready to proceed. Ms. Norris. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And I did notice the defendant was um, just raising her hand a, a moment ago. I don't, I don't know uh, necessarily what that's about, but I just wanted to bring it to the court's attention before we got too far down the road here. I would like to talk to my lawyer before we start this. You haven't talked to her, Mr. Watts? I spoke with her. He spoke with me Thursday and I didn't. Yeah. We had stuff that we had said then, but I have not heard from him since. So I'm trying to figure out, can I talk to him on a breakout or... I don't well, know that I'll allow it. I, I really need to get started with this evidentiary hearing if we're going to have one, but uh, okay. Ms. Watts, I'll allow you to have a short breakout session with your client at this time. So we'll recess briefly for that purpose. Or Mandy, if we're still recording and broadcasting, we will resume. If not, please uh, put us in position to resume. We are still. Very well. Following a, a recess period in this case to allow a breakout session between defense counsel and the defendant, we resume proceedings in State versus Wendy Scott. Ms. Scott, Mr. Watts, Ms. Norris appearing as before. Mr. Watts, is there any announcement to be made at this time? Not at this time, Your Honor. Thank you. We're ready to proceed to prelim. Very well. And the state may call their first witness. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The state calls Brian Dunlap. Mr. Dunlap? Yes. You'd raise your right hand, please. I will administer an oath. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the matter now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. All right. May I question the witness, Ms. Norris. Your Honor, I would ask the witnesses be sequestered, please. All right. Uh, any uh, subpoenaed witness who's on this meeting, uh, other than Mr. Dunlap, needs to be sequestered. We'll put you in a waiting room and we'll call you in when it's your time to testify. Mandy. All right, you may begin your questioning now, Ms. Norris. Thank you, Your Honor. Please state your name for the record. Brian Dunlap. And uh, Mr. Dunlap, uh, you live in Butler County? Yes. What area of the county do you live in? Um, I live just south of the Augusta Airport. Okay. And uh, were you living there in uh, July of this year? Yes. And uh, do you recall July 20th of this year? Y yes, ma'am. And uh, why do you recall that day? Um, from the events that happened around five o'clock or so, uh, I had a, a woman knock on my door, and when I answered, uh, she was distraught. So I 
called 911 to to uh, get the sh the police department there. Okay. And uh did you know this this woman? No. Okay. And um uh, was she, you said that she was distraught. Um, was she um, uh, injured or? Yes. And and explain to the court uh, what sorts of injuries that you uh, seen. I believe it was on her left arm. She had some lacerations and was bleeding. And uh, I, I did offer to, to help clean up the wound. And at that time, she did not want it, you know, want the wound cleaned up. She wanted okay. the police department to see what happened. Okay. And did she explain to you um, uh, what happened uh, yeah. to, to her? Yes, she did. Okay. And um, were you, did you tell uh, 911 uh, what she had told you or um, did you just call 911 and then they just sent somebody out? When I called 911, I was interpreting what she was telling about her story to the 911 operator. Okay. And just a brief synopsis. Of, uh, what did she tell you um, had happened to her? She told me that there were two ladies that came to her apartment. Um, one of the ladies was holding her stomach saying she needed to go to the hospital. So, um, Beverly gave them a ride and then they were given her directions. And at some point she mentioned to them, this is not the way to the hospital. And at that point she said that they threw her out of the car and stole her car. Okay. And, uh, were you able to figure out, um, about how far away she was from, I mean, was this right by your house or? No, she, no, she had to walk at least a quarter to a half a mile to, to make it to my house. There was, okay. there was another house within eye shot of my house, but it's, it's probably three blocks or so. And there was nobody there. She went to that house first and then okay. she saw my house up on the hill and she walked up to my house. Okay. And uh, did she um, identify herself at some point to you? Yes. I mean, yeah, after I, so, so I had to put my dog up. He doesn't let anybody come in the house. And so I put him up. And then when I came back, I would start asking her questions. And uh, she told me her name, how old she was. And she was pretty distraught. She was, she was definitely in shock when I talked to her. Okay. And what did she tell you her name was? Beverly Zilke. And how old was she? Or is she? I think she said she was 85, 86. Okay. And uh, did you talk any further about what had happened yes. with her? Yeah. I mean... When the, when the sheriff's department got there, you know, she had to tell the story over again. And like I said, she was definitely in shock. So the story was kind of, I mean, she said the same things, but there was, there were, how do I say it? There were instances input that she didn't tell me in the beginning. Like um, she had her daughter's dog with her and they somehow kept the dog they didn't they threw her out of the car and then just took off with the dog she was pretty distraught because she was a dog setting for her daughter that was one of the things i remember um can you repeat the, the question oh i just want to know if there was anything else that you that you talked about um about the about what had happened to her and um anything else besides um the the dog that stands oh, I do. out yeah, she she did say that one of the girls threatened that she had a gun. And at that point, I think that's when they kicked her out, said that she would kill her. Okay. And this whole time um, that, you know, about how long do you think she was at your house, Ms. Zilke? It was, a, it was over an hour. Okay. And... Uh, 
was she in the same uh, state uh, most of the time that she was at your house? She was, yes, she was pretty, yeah, she was in shock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you mentioned before uh, shock, um, distraught. Uh, was she um, crying or did she? Really, the, the, I mean, she's a strong woman from what I can remember, but the only time she really cried is when, when she was worried about her daughter's dog. Okay. And uh, did she have you call anyone for her? Besides, I mean, obviously you called 911. Um, no, because she didn't have her phone. They they had her phone, so she she didn't remember the numbers. Oh, okay. I do know that the the sheriff's department called her or had her call her bank to shut off her credit cards because she was worried about them using her credit cards. And when she came to you, did she have anything with her? No. No, just the clothes on her back. And uh, once she left um, your house, um, did you did you have any other in, involvement with uh, the case or with law enforcement? No, no, I haven't. Okay. And so uh, when law enforcement was there, um, uh, did you basically kind of explain what you and I've been talking about here, about how she ended up at your house, et cetera? Yes. yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Dunlap. I don't think that I have any further questions for you, um, uh, Your Honor, although um, uh, I may need to have him uh, stick around for possible uh, just identification. But otherwise, uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Watts, any questions for Mr. Dunlap? Not for this witness, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Dunlap, uh, I'm going to have you go ahead and stay with the Zoom meeting. I'll ask okay. you to mute yourself at this time. Uh, until your release, I'm going to ask you to stay with us. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. All right. Um, are you asking that he be sequestered again as well, Mr. Watts? Please, Your Honor. All right. We'll go ahead and put you in a waiting room, Mr. Dunlap, in case you're recalled later. Thank you. Next witness, Ms. Norris. Your Honor, the state calls Beverly Zilke. Beverly Zilke? Okay, you're muted right now. If you could take your mute off. And if you could change your camera angle where we can see your entire face. Unmute. There we go. Hello. Hello. All right, Ms. Zilke. Yes. Is there any way you can sit up or change the angle of your screen where we can see your entire face? There, that's better. That's better. That's fine right there. Ms. Zilke, I'm going to administer an oath to you at this time, so I'm going to need you to raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the matter now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God? I do. All right. Ms. Norris, you may question the witness. You can put your hand down, ma'am. Um, Ms. Zilke, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. And uh, uh, please state your name for the record. Beverly Zilke, C-I-E-L-K-E. -E. And Ms. Zilke, in uh, July of this year, uh, where did you live? Oh. Where were you living when that happened? Oh, God. Well, I lived in the uh, the... Uh, Union Mills apartment complex. Okay, and and that's in Wichita. Yes, it is. Okay, and uh, do you recall um, an incident on July twentieth? <clears throat> uh, what incident are you referring to? Um, did you have to talk to law enforcement on July twentieth about something that happened to you? 
Uh, yes. And can you explain to the court what happened to you on July 20th? Well, it's sort of a long story. Do you want to hear everything? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> uh, uh, well, the girl that lives in the apartment complex called and asked if uh, she could come down and look at a cookbook. And I said, well, yeah, that would be fine. And her, uh, the other girl's name, I think, is, is it Elizabeth? Is it? And the, the small girl that lived in the same apartment complex in Union Mill uh, apartments. <clears throat> and uh, so I thought she'd come. The doorbell rang. <clears throat> and it was uh, the, I didn't know her name, but it, I found out today it was Wendy. And uh, she came, she said, is she here yet? And I said, no. Uh, she should be here any time. It was shortly after the other girl came. And and uh, Wendy and I sat in the living room and just chit-chatted about small talk. And the other girl was in the room with the cookbook in a, a bedroom in the very back of my house where I have a bookcase. <clears throat> and uh, finally, she said, she's taking a long time. I think... I'll go back and see what she's doing. I said, oh, oh okay. And uh, I, she went back there, and it was quite a while, and I thought, my lands, what's going on? So I got up, went down the hall, uh, started to open the door, and it was locked. And I thought, huh. And I tried it again, and it unlocked. It was unlocked. So I went in, and... Uh, she, uh, the <clears throat> other girl was sitting on the floor looking through the cookbook and Wendy was standing there just kind of watching her. And uh, she finally continued to watch. And then she said, all of a sudden, just out of the clear blue sky, she started rolling. She said, oh, 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 and rolling on the floor. Um, and and uh, Wendy said, oh, my God, she's having another attack. She needs to go to the <clears throat> she needs to go to the emergency room. Could you possibly take us there? And I said, well, uh, well, yes, I, I'll do that. And so I uh, I we all got down and got in the car and uh, the thin girl sat in the it was is her name Elizabeth? I I think someone told me it was the the thin girl, and the uh, and Wendy, the heavier set girl. She got in the back seat, and we went down Rock Road to the highway and started going on the highway and turned to go to and it was towards Andover, and I know there's two stoplights. Was one, and then the second you turn and go down the street to go uh, in Andover. And when we got to the first one, I was started to go, and she said, no, turn here. And I said, that's a country road. And they said, yeah, it's a shortcut because her uh, insurance won't be accepted at the other place, and it will at this other place that we're going to. I said, okay. So we started going down the uh, country road and went and went and went and the road and road and I finally I said where is this place we've passed Andover <clears throat> and she said don't worry it's it's down the road more and I I went down and went down and finally I just stopped the car and I said I want to know where we're going because we've been on this road a long long time we should be there <clears throat> and uh all of and all of a sudden that wendy held her purse up and she said see this purse i said yes and she said i have a gun in it and i will use it and uh then she and i said she jumped out of the car and yanked my my 
driver's side door open and I also had my my daughter's dog because she was in the car little Chloe because I was babysitting because my daughter went on a cruise and so I was babysitting her dog and and uh she grabbed my hand by the door, which would have been my left hand, and she started pulling it and pulling it and pulling it. And and she had long fingernails and they they cut into my skin all the way down. I had I ended up having blood running I had blood running clear down my arm. And the other girl was the other the thin girl that uh what lived in the apartment. She was pushing me from the back and Wendy was pulling my arm and yanking me and I was trying to hang on with my other, my my right hand to the steering wheel and stay in the car. And they said, get out of the car and give me your purse and your car. And I said, no, that car belongs to me and so does my purse. And they finally, she pulled me out and my whole arm was blood. It was all bloody. And uh, and when I they threw me in the dirt, when I stood up, my I had blood all down my arm, and I the dirt was stuck all over the whole entire arm. And I finally started. They zoomed off in the car, and I didn't know. And I was yelling when they were driving off, and I said, "Where is Chloe? Where is Chloe?" And they were already gone. They didn't. Didn't care. I didn't know if they took Chloe or if Chloe was out of the car. I walked around. I couldn't find her. I finally started walking down the road and I went to a farmhouse that I came to and knocked on the door. They were not home. So I walked back out in the road and I walked on down uh, quite a ways to another farmhouse. I went to the door and knocked on the door and the man answered and I said, I need to call the police. I was just thrown out in the dirt in my my own car and they took off with my purse in my car. And I said, I need to uh, have the police. He said, oh, my goodness, I'll call right away. And so they called uh, the man called the police and I sat on the front porch and then here come the fire truck. And they wanted to know if I went to, and the the policeman and the sheriff, and they all came in the driveway of the farmhouse where I stopped at. And I said, no, I didn't need to go to no hospital. Finally, the fire truck left, except they, they treated my arm. They uh, washed it all down and put medicine on it and put a uh, bandage on the, on, no, wait a minute. They I, they washed it all down and they put medicine on it. I don't remember. I don't remember whether they 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 put some bandage on the bad part of the uh, just a, a band aid on a couple of them, but others the others were kind of they were basically clear. And okay, uh, Missy, okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop you right there. I want to see if the attorney has any other specific questions for you. Ms. Norris, do you have a question to ask her? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Zilke, when you say country road, do you mean gravel road? Well, it was out not, in not the country. Paved. It was out in the country. It was not, it was not paved because I, I had dirt all over my whole arms when I stood up because my whole arm was bloody. The blood okay. was coming out of um, all down my whole entire arm. Okay. And the person that's, um, uh, and, and real quick, I'll ask this question first. When you're looking at your screen right now, do you see just me or do you see multiple people? Uh, I see multiple people. One, two, three, four, five people. Okay, so do you see the person that you've been referring to as the 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 bigger girl and Wendy when you were talking? Yeah. Yes. Or Can you say this. what uh, what color she's wearing and maybe what the title in the corner of the box is? She's wearing orange. Okay. An orange. 
And Your Honor, we would ask that the, the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant, um, Wendy Scott. The record so reflects. Uh, Ms. Scott, hold your commentary. And uh, Ms. Zilke, uh, how old are you, or how old were you in July? Um, 86 years old. Okay. And... Um, what kind of car? Uh, I have a. I had a brand new car. It was a brand new Ultima Nissan. So it's this year's. Okay, so a 2024 Nissan Ultima. Uh, uh, yes. And do you recall what you paid for it? Um, well, I don't remember. I used it. My other car as a trade-in, and I it was quite a few thousand dollars. Uh, do you recall uh, if it was over $25,000? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. If there's someone with Ms. Zielke, I'm going to caution them. They are not to help her or to assist her in any way by providing uh, any information to her. She needs to testify on her own today. So uh, I'm going to make sure that there's no one else who's testifying other than Beverly Zielke. So re-ask your question, Ms. Norris. Um, Ms. Zilke, was the car, um, uh, did you purchase it this year? Oh, yeah. It's brand new. And and it's, so did you pay I more haven't than even had. I haven't even had it a year yet. And did you pay more than $25,000 for that car? You know what? I can't remember. I Honest to God, I can't remember. I, I paid, uh, I know they. Don't be uh, looking to anyone else to answer, Beverly. They gave me a. Um, there's no one in the kit. No one in here but me. Okay. Uh, um, they gave me um, a, a fourteen thousand dollar trade in, and I paid the rest cash. And do you recall if the amount that you paid in cash? I I do not. I had I could get that information if I go out to the the Nissan dealership, but I don't remember what I paid. That's all right. That's all right. Um. Now, uh, uh, Miss Silky, when this is going on, were uh, were you in fear for your safety? Well, yeah. When they pulled, when they pulled my stopped and jumped and pulling my arms and shoved me out in the dirt and the and zoomed off in my car, definitely, I was terrified. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, do you recall? Uh, 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 anything else that uh, Wendy said to you about the gun or uh, if she was going to use the gun? She said, I've used this before and I will use it again. That's what she, how she said it to me. Okay. And besides the scratches that um, uh, the nails did, did you have any other injuries from the ground or the rocks or um, I guess maybe even the fall or uh, the whole pushing and pulling on your body? Uh, my whole arm was just ripped. The, I, I'm, I'm assuming she had long fingernails and when they're pulling me, it just tore my whole skin up. My whole skin, even the... Even the the fire truck and things that came out and cleaned all of them up. Notice the whole thing was all done. They had to clean my whole entire arm, and they put uh, some kind of medicine on it, and they they just cleaned up the whole arm and stuff. Miss Zilke, did you end up having to go get any additional medical attention from no, from this incident? No, I did not. Okay, so you didn't end up with any broken bones um, no, or anything not. like that? No, I did not. Okay, well, that's good. Um,
And um, Ms. Zilke, um, based on how you were explaining it, you did not give them any permission to take your car or your purse or your daughter's dog. Definitely not. They threw me on the ground and just took it. I could not believe it. I was hanging onto the steering wheel with everything, trying to stay in the car. And that the other girl was shoving me from the back. And Wendy was pulling my arm from the other. She was standing with my, uh, the driver's door open, pulling my arm. And I was trying so hard to stay in the car. And they said they were going to take it. And I said, no, this belongs to me. No, you cannot have my purse. Because they said, give me your purse. She said, give me your purse. Give it to me now. And I said, no, it belongs to me. Okay, next question, Ms. Norris. Thank you, Ms. Silky. I don't think that I have any other questions. Um, but uh, Mr. Watts, uh, the defense attorneys may have some follow-up questions, okay? All right. Thanks. Mr. Watts, do you have any questions for Ms. Zilke? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Zilke, how are you doing? I'm fine. Okay. Now, you mentioned that two persons, that basically some persons came to your door, correct? What did you say? You said that some persons came to your door? Some persons? Uh-huh. That day? Uh, Wendy came to my door first. Okay, let's talk. Which about I was that. shocked because I she wasn't with that um, the other girl th that lives there, and uh, she said, "Do you mind if I come in and uh, wait for her?" Ma'am, and I said, uh, "Well, ma'am, hold a moment." You mentioned you've used that name Wendy several times. How and when did you learn that this person's name was Wednesday, Wendy? Because uh, today I learned it. Uh, okay. I didn't know it before, but I learned it today when uh, we were calling in and stuff, trying to set everything up to get on the TV with, I mean, the internet with you. Okay. Now, Wendy was there. The person you describe as Wendy, you name as Wendy, was there. There was another person there, correct? Yes. Uh, that was her good friend okay. who lived on the same floor as I did, but she lived down further down the hall from me. And okay. I, I know her last Thank name you. is Rogers because I, they told us that, but I don't know what, I don't remember okay. what they said her first name was. Okay. Who told you that? Uh, well, when I talked to the sheriff. Okay. So the sheriff told you her name was Rogers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You said this is a person who lived on the same floor with you? Yes, she lived on the same floor, but way down the hall from where I lived. Okay. Was she a person you were familiar with? Uh, I had recently just talked to her. I didn't really know her, but I had talked to her uh, because uh, she was sitting in the uh, her car crying. Okay. And... Uh, is this a person that's, you is this a person you knew by name? No. Okay. I had no idea what her name was. I'd never met her before, never talked to her before. Well, I'm talking about the lady that's there on your floor. The I think it's been described as the thin person. Do you did you know her by name? Well, that I understand her name is Rogers, her last name. That well, was the thin girl. Ma'am, I understand that's what you've been told her name is. Did you know her name that day? No, not until I was, uh, not, no, not until I was told. Okay. And I didn't really know her and I forgot her name because I'd never really, Thank you, I didn't really know her. So this person you called Wendy came to your door and asked to step in and wait for the other person. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Which shocked me because... Ma'am, what time would this have been? Oh, I don't recall what time. Was it uh, early afternoon, late afternoon? I would say it was early afternoon. Okay. Uh, and 
you testified on direct that they that basically this person you've called Wendy Wendy came in and waited on the other person and the other person followed shortly after. Is that yes. Right? Yes, okay. and that's true. Now, this other person, if I understood your testimony correctly, went into a back room to look at some cookbooks. Is that correct? Uh, um, that girl that has the name Rogers, she went into the back room to look at cookbooks. Okay, so you went to the back room to look at cookbooks. Uh, how long was she back there? I I really don't recall like you know maybe 15, 15 minutes because uh the Wendy sat in my living room and I sat there and talked we talked back and forth that uh and then Wendy said I wonder what's taking her so long. I'm gonna go back and check check out and see what's happening. And yeah. she went back in that room. And, I'll, and I'll I stop you for a moment there, ma'am. When you went back in the room, did you go back or did Wendy go back? She went back there. Okay, so Wendy, Wendy went back there. Did you go with her? No, I did not. Okay. Now, you testified on direct that when you went to the back room or someone went to the back room, the door was locked. Is that correct? Okay. Then... They didn't come right back, and I thought, well, what are they doing? So I got up and walked back down the hall, and I put my hand on the doorknob, and it was locked, and I turned it again, and it was unlocked. Okay. Uh, and so I went in, and and uh, uh, the thin girl was, uh, uh, I think, Roger's. And she was on the floor looking through a cookbook, and Wendy was standing at just looking down, and they were talking about a recipe, and uh, that's all it was. Okay. Would you describe this thin girl for me? How tall was she? Uh, she well, she had her hair in those uh, long kind of braids all over her whole head, those big long braids. Okay. Um, Is she taller than you or shorter than you? She's a very she's a very, very petite small girl. Okay. Black or white? What? Black girl or white girl? Oh, they were both black girls. Okay. Was she heavy set or very? We well, said she was petite, petite so thin. She's very petite and small, thin. Okay. Was she taller than you or shorter than you? Well, I don't know. I never really thought about it. I, she's just a small framed girl. Okay. She's a uh, very petite and small. Okay. She's. Now I would say she was, I wouldn't be, I can't say because I don't know for sure. Okay. I would be guessing. Okay. Now, you testified that the thin girl, this person you've named as Rogers, acted like she was injured or hurting. Correct? Yes. All of a sudden, she, she started laid back and started going, uh, moaning and then she started she rolled back and forth oh 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 my stomach oh and now, and wendy said oh my we need to get her to the emergency room could could you please okay. take us to the emergency room okay and about what time would you have left do you know I I have no idea. I don't recall that. Honestly, okay. I don't. But we left I'm right away. Ma'am, just wait for me to ask a question, please, okay? Okay. I'm sorry. You indicated that basically it took you out of the country claiming that they were going to a hospital, correct? Yes. Oh, definitely. Okay. We were All taking right. her to an emergency oh. room. Ma'am? So I thought... And I was told. Okay, Thank you. Now, 
And you indicated these people then threw you out of your car and left you, correct? They sure did. Okay. I want to hit or talk about the next time you saw either one of those persons. Uh, I've never seen okay. him since that incident well, happened. Let, let me ask you that. Um, this person that you're now calling Wendy here today, when is the, from that day, the day that you were thrown out of your car, when is the next time you saw her? Uh, uh, right now in the picture on TV, it's the first time that I've seen her and I see her on TV this minute. Okay. So the next time you saw her was today at this hearing on the computer that screen. That is correct. Right? That is correct. Did you ever at any point see her or identify her to, to law enforcement prior to today? I have not seen her. I have not seen her. I have not seen a picture of her. I haven't anything of her. I There's never been a contact okay. since that so, incident. And as you sit here today, this person you've identified as Wendy is sitting in jail orange, isn't she? Yes. Okay. And she's in a screen identified as Butler County Jail, correct? I didn't I didn't know where she was at. I uh, have never been told. Well so I screen, can't ma'am is the screen that she is on on the computer screen, does it say Butler County Jail on it? Yes it does. Okay. Now, the other person, this thin, petite person. Since the day this happened, have you seen her Judge, at all? Judge, Your Honor, relevance to this no. particular prelim. To what? Wait, Miss Zilke. Honor, I think it goes to the reliability of the identifications in this case. Wait. They asked the question, Mr. Watts. S Go ahead. Since since the day this incident happened, have you seen the other person involved, this thin, petite girl? No, I have not. Okay. I want to make sure I'm clear. At no point did law enforcement approach you uh, with any photographs of any people that ask you to identify anyone? Is that correct? That is correct. Never have they done that. Ever. They never brought a person by your house or your residence to see if you could identify them? No, they did not. And you've used the term Wendy here today to describe this person. Okay. And I may have asked you this earlier. Where did you get that name, Wendy? Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered. Objection sustained. Okay. I, I see that. Okay. Your Honor, I don't think I have any other questions today. Thank you. Doris, is there any reason why we can't release Beverly Zielke from the meeting at this time? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Zielke? Yes? 
you can stay with this meeting if you want to, or you can leave it. But if you stay, I need you to go ahead and put yourself back on mute. Okay. Uh, I have to put it on mute. Yes. Wendy. Yeah. Okay. Come here, honey. Okay. That I don't. I have to call my. That that's fine. Very good. Very good. We'll move on. Uh, Ms. Norris, do you have additional witnesses to call? Uh, Your Honor, just uh, briefly, Detective Chandler. Okay. Okay, we can bring Detective Chandler in. Detective Chandler. I'll need him to join us with audio and video. All right, if you'd raise your right hand, please. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the matter now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I didn't hear your response. Okay, your volume on your speaker must be down because we're not hearing a thing. Can you hear me now? I can. I do. All right. Very well. Having sworn in the witness now, Ms. Norris, you may ask questions. Please state your name and occupation for the record. Uh, my name is Robbie Chandler. I am a detective with the Butler County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been in law enforcement? Uh, a little over nine years. Okay. And um, were you working your capacity as a detective on July 20th for the Sheriff's Department of this year? Yes, I was. And uh, did you end up being the investigator uh, affiant uh, regarding um, Beverly Zilke case? Yes, I was. Okay. And uh, do you see, uh, I guess, how did you identify Miss Zilke? Um, she was on scene um, at the call, and we identified her um, by her name and date of birth. Okay. And was that information that she provided to you? Yes. Okay, and the person that you had contact with regarding the incident, do you see her on the screen today? Yes, I do. And can you describe just briefly um, Miss, uh, the person that you identified that day as Miss Silky? An uh, older lady, white hair, uh, wearing a, I can't see what color blouse she's wearing, but it looks like maybe uh, light and dark blouse. And Your Honor, I would ask that the um, officer has identified the victim, Beverly Zilke. The record so reflects. Thank you. And uh, where did you have contact with her at? It was uh, off of Indianola, and I believe 120th. Uh, the exact address, I don't, I don't recall. And is that within Butler County? Yes. Okay. And um, we we previously heard uh, from another individual. What part of the county is um, was what were you in? Like the. Northeast, southeast, southwest, uh, southwest part of the county, otherwise known as district district three. Okay, and is that near the Augusta Airport or closer to Rose Hill? Uh, near near the Augusta Airport. Okay, and are there any hospitals or other medical facilities there in that area? No. Okay, and um, was this a gravel road? Yes, it was an unpaved gravel road. Okay. And uh, were you able to find the scene where the incident happened? I, you were actually at somebody's house, but that's not where the incident happened, correct? Correct. Uh, yes, I was able to find uh, the scene where it happened on 120th, just um, west of the intersection of Southwest Indianola. Approximately how far from uh, where you had contact with Miss Silky was that? Where the was the place of the incident? Maybe three hundred yards, two hundred yards. It wasn't. It wasn't very far. And uh, less than a mile. Yes. Okay. And 
Uh, were you able to identify Ms. Zilke's car? Yes, the 2024 Nissan. Okay, and uh, were you able to locate Ms. Zilke's car at some point? Yeah, on uh, flaw camera. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, approximately how much is that vehicle worth? Um, I have to look at my notes. And I don't need the, the specific I, I dollar. Don't know, I, don't, I don't know if I have an exact value of it. I think it's more than $30,000. Okay, more than $30,000? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, that'll be sufficient for, for our purposes at the moment. Um, now, uh, were you were able to locate Miss Zilke's car, this Nissan? Yes. And um, uh, were you able to, I guess, were you there when it was initially stopped? And, and who did that? Yeah. Uh I was the on-call detective. I had gone home um, after the initial investigation, and I got called back out uh, after midnight. Uh, WPD, Wichita Police Department, had made the stop and located the vehicle. Okay. And uh, did you then uh, have information regarding who was driving the said vehicle? Yes. Who was uh, that? Uh, Your Honor calls for hearsay. Uh, Your Honor calls Ms. for hearsay. Uh, hearsay objection. Uh, Your Honor, uh, the officer uh, may have gotten information from WPD, um, but had to identify and actually locate um, any 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 persons that they were referring to. Um, so, Your Honor, it, it does not go to the truth of the matter asserted. It goes to the, basically the process of his investigation. Well, with that uh, limitation, Ms. Norris, the court will overrule the objection. You may continue. And um, Mr. Uh, Detective Chandler? Yes. Um, uh, Wichita Police Department and located the vehicle off of like, Shady Brick Lane and found uh, Miss Wendy Scott as the driver. Uh, and I believe she had one other passenger, Mr. Allen. And, and were you able to talk to Miss Scott? Yes. And um, the person, uh, where did you talk to Miss Scott at? Um, at the Wesley Medical Center. Okay. Had there been an accident regarding the Nissan? No. Okay. So um, you ended up speaking to Ms. Scott at uh, Weston Medical Center. Correct. And did she identify herself to you? Yes. And what did she identify herself or how did she identify herself? She uh, identified herself as Wendy, uh, Wendy Scott. Um, trying to think how else you want to say it, but she just, she just identified herself in name and date of birth. Okay. And uh, were you able to confirm that? Yes. And uh, do you see the person uh, that identified themselves as Wendy Scott on the screen today? I do. She and uh, please describe her for the court. Uh, black female. Uh, she's wearing an orange jumpsuit. Your Honor, ask that the record reflect that the officer has identified the defendant, Wendy Scott. Record again, so reflects. And did Miss Scott talk to you um, about this case? Yes, she did. And did she do it under Miranda? Yes, she did. Um, but even not under Miranda, did she do it voluntarily? Yes. And uh, did she make admissions regarding what happened with Miss um, Zilke? Yes. Uh, so did she admit being in Miss Zilke's vehicle? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Uh, objection is sustained. Let it. Let him tell the story here, Ms. Norris. Um, just uh, briefly, uh, Detective, uh, what did she tell you uh, involving Ms. Zilke? Um, she told us. Excuse me. 
told me one thing I like it. Um, she said she started off by saying it was all her friend's fault. Um, uh, said her friend was identified as a Tylisa Calvin. Said that uh, it was Miss Colvin's idea to give Zelki a ride into the county under disguise of being sick and taking her to the hospital. Um, once they got her out into the county, they would uh, take her vehicle from her and, and her belongings. And uh... Did you rely upon that name that she gave you uh, when she was her, her basically her, I guess, her co-defendant's name? Yes, I did. Um, and she said that those belongings were still uh, of Miss Zelke's that they took uh, were still in her possession. And uh, with that information, I applied for a search warrant and executed a search warrant on Miss Colvin's apartment in Wichita. And did you find that Ms. Colvin uh, was or was not um, her co-defendant? She was not. Um, she had given me a statement that she had just gotten a ride from uh, Miss Scott that night when uh, I believe something happened to her car and she was chased by a dog. And uh, and this this information was confirmed by Ms. Colvin's employer. Okay. So were you eventually able to identify um, the, the the defendant, uh, Miss Scott's co-defendant? Yes. And what what's her name? Elizabeth Rosa Rogers. Okay. And um, let's see. So uh, based on your conversation, uh, your interview with uh, Ms. Scott, the defendant, uh, she basically admits that she was present and took Ms. Zilke's car? Um, she she said it was, I believe it was, may, may I refer to my notes real quick? Sure. Um, Miss Scott admitted to the ordeal up until knowing how she came about having the car. Say that you, you kind of cut out a little bit. Um, Miss Scott said what? Miss Scott admitted to being with her co defendant, Miss Rogers, up until the point where um, they were at. Miss Selke's apartment, and the next thing she remembers is that she's in Miss in Miss Selke's car, driving it around. Okay, so she uh, okay. Um, and was that uh, when she's getting pulled over by Wichita PD? Correct. Okay. And is that the same day or basically the same 24 hour period? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Detective Chandler. I don't think I have any further questions, but Mr. Watts may have some follow up. Okay. Mr. Watts. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Detective, I want to follow up on that last part. You, yes. You spoke with Ms. Scott in a hospital, correct? Correct. Okay. Do you know why she was there? Uh, no, I was never told why exactly she was there until um, later on I was given a uh, that she she had PCP in her urine. Okay. She's there apparently for some sort of a drug treatment or 
something like that. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes. Okay. When was that? Was that the same day, the next day? When exactly was that? Um, that would have been when the police took us there. I think it was after midnight, so it would have been the 21st of uh, July. Okay. And this incident took place on the afternoon of the 20th, correct? Correct. Okay. So the next day. Correct. Okay. I guess here's what I'm trying to figure out. How did you come to uh, go to Ms. Scott there in the hospital and inquire about this case? Uh, she was taken there by Wichita Police Department after they stopped her vehicle in Shakerbrook Lane and took her into custody. Okay. And by her vehicle, are we talking about Ms. Zilke's vehicle? Great. Okay. So WDP stopped the car. Um... And she ended up going to the hospital. Correct. Okay. I presume, to your knowledge, then she's in the car, correct? Yes. All right. Now, if I understood your testimony at, at uh, first, well, let, let me back up a little bit. What's her demeanor and condition as you're talking to her here in the hospital? Uh, she was, she would get loud. Um, she was asleep. We had to wake her up uh, a time or two. Um, and then she would just start right back up where she led off at. Okay. She was aware. She knew who her name was. She knew where she was. She uh, asked for us. Uh, she wanted to talk to us, law enforcement. Well, the reason I asked that is I'm looking at your affidavit. Yes. And the affidavit tells that basically you learned that she was ready to talk, right? Correct. Well, when you got there, she was asleep and had to be woken up. Correct. Okay. As you're talking to her, did she fall back asleep again? At one point during the conversation, yes. Any additional questions, Mr. Watts? One moment, Your Honor, please. Now, she spoke uh, during this conversation with you in the hospital about essentially the plan to get control of this car. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And that this other person that she identified as Colvin would essentially do the ruse to get her in the car and try to take her to the hospital. Right. Okay. But you testified a moment ago that the next thing she knew, as you as she put it, she was in the car and being picked up by WPD. Is that right? Correct. She didn't provide any information of what happened in between? Yes, she... She told us about going up into Ms. Zelke's apartment. Um, that she was with Ms. Colvin. And um, I think Ms. Colvin at that point got had stomach aches. And that was how they got her to go take her to the hospital, uh, which was a way to get her out of the apartment. But Miss 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 Scott never said anything about what happened after the apartment. Okay. At that time with Miss with Miss uh, Coleman. 
I think that's all I have at this time. Thank you. All right. Any reason why Officer Chandler can't be uh, released from the meeting at this time, Ms. Norris? No, Your Honor. And no. actually, um, Your Honor, no further witnesses, but I do have some amendments to make on the record. All right. Does the defense intend to present evidence at this hearing? Not at this hearing, Your Honor. Thank you. Very well. Your amendments that you're requesting, Ms. Norris? Uh, Your Honor, uh, state would be moving to amend count one to um, aggravated kidnapping, uh, which is a level one person felony based on injury. Um, and I would be moving to amend count five from misdemeanor theft to felony felony theft, a level seven non-person felony based on the value of the Nissan plus the the other items already listed in that um, count. And right. no, nothing further, Your Honor. Any objection to the amendments, Mr. Watts? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Ms. Norris, uh, your theory regarding the amendment on count one, obviously um, the bare bones pleading that you filed in this case doesn't help the court sort out exactly what your theory is. So now that you've upgraded from kidnapping to aggravated kidnapping, what what is the evidence before this court that would uh, suggest that the court should bind over and find probable cause as to either kidnapping or especially aggravated kidnapping. Your Honor, aggravated kidnapping, taking or confining any person accomplished by force, threat, or deception. Deception because they basically got her to take them to, well, allegedly to take them to a hospital. And obviously they ended up being nowhere near a hospital. And then the aggravated portion of it would be when bodily harm is inflicted upon the person kidnapped. And um, the Ms. Zilke clearly stated she had bodily harm. All right, and the evidence supporting a holding? Your Honor, in the, in the, based on the kidnapping? Yes. Okay. Um, there, but basically she was in a vehicle and they basically, yeah, I, the theory would be that they, they took her and that she was basically confined in a vehicle. Um, and it was all under deception, a, a ruse. Uh, so uh, deception to get her to basically get away from her apartment so they could basically steal her car from her. But they had to isolate her uh, out in the country. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, even though she's the one that's driving they're, they're you know, the only reason she's going is because of them. So that would be state's theory. All right. Taking her by deception with the intent to hold her to facilitate the commission of the later felony theft. And yeah, and the aggravated robbery. Very well. Uh, the court will only allow the amendment to count one to reflect a, a charge of aggravated kidnapping as requested, as well as the amendment to count five. Uh, upgrading from misdemeanor theft to felony theft, uh, court finding that there is evidence in the record to support such amendment. Court further finds that based on the evidence presented that the felony crime of aggravated kidnapping has been committed and that the defendant, Wendy Scott, committed it. Regarding count two, the court does find that there's probable cause that the crime of mistreatment of a dependent elder person a level five person felony has been committed and that the defendant, Wendy Scott, committed it. Regarding count three, the court does find that there's probable cause that the felony crime of criminal threat has been committed and that the defendant, Wendy Scott, committed it. Regarding count four, the court does find that the there's probable cause that the felony crime of aggravated robbery has been committed and that the defendant, Wendy Scott, committed it. Regarding count five, the court does find that there's probable cause from this hearing that the uh, crime of felony theft has been committed and that the defendant, Wendy Scott, committed it. And regarding count six, the court does find probable cause that the felony crime of interference with law enforcement 
a level nine non-person felony has been committed and that the defendant, Wendy Scott, has committed it. Therefore, the court binds the defendant over on all six counts as amended following a presentation of evidence. We will proceed to arraignment at this time. Mr. Watts, does your client desire the charging document to be read to her? Uh, Your Honor, we discussed the charges. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It would weigh former reading of same and are not guilty at this time. As the case be set for appropriate pretrial and jury trial settings. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Watts. The court will uh, set this case for both uh, jury trial and pretrial conference settings. And Your Honor, the, the uh, defendant has her hand up. I'm not sure if she needs to address the court or her counsel. Okay, well, we're going to do our scheduling first, then I'll address her. Uh, Mandy, if you could suggest our February trial date for Butler. I'm dying. My daughter is going to die. Oh, she's going to die. I just want to see my baby. Can I please Andy? Talk? Judge. Just a moment, Miss Scott. Let me finish my scheduling here. Okay, it'll be February 25th for the jury trial date. And can you suggest a pretrial conference date the week before? Okay. Friday. I'm sorry, I didn't look at the date. Friday. February 21st at 9 or 10 a.m. We'll make this 9 o'clock a.m. Court will establish pretrial conferences, the next scheduled setting at this time, for February 21, 2025, 9 o'clock a.m. That will be conducted by Zoom. Uh, the court will establish jury trial date uh, currently set to begin 9 o'clock a.m. on February 25, 2025. That will be an in-person proceeding, courtroom B, Butler County Judicial Center, El Dorado, Kansas, for all stages if it goes. So February 21, 9 o'clock for pretrial conference by Zoom. Uh, jury trial set to begin February 25, 2025. All right. Uh, Ms. Scott, I'll address you now. Yes, sir. Um, all I'm asking, my baby is dying. That's it. I wrote a letter to the courts and to my lawyer letting them know that she's dying. All I'm asking is for a fellow to speak with my baby. That's it. She might not make it to February. She might not make it eight years from now, but my baby is dying. That's all I'm asking. She got Thursday cancer, sir. That's all I'm asking. Can I just see her? Okay. Who Who is your baby? My daughter, Kanai Scott Collins, I wrote the courts and put a room number, what hospital she's in and everything. I've been writing, I've been writing, asking. I just want to see my daughter. She got brain cancer. That's it. I've been begging and pleading. She's in Wesley. She's in uh, Children's Mercy. She's in the pig unit. You can call and verify it. I, I, I've been asking here just to call and Look, you're at the nurses stage. I'm not even getting that. I don't even have money on my foot because they won't let me work. I just want to see my baby. That's it. That's it. Just see my daughter. I'm asking you, Judge, whatever you want me to do. I'm not a no runner. None of you know. You can put a monitor and everything. I just want to see my baby. She might not be there. She might not be able to see me two days from now. I'm just asking. Please, just hear me out. Children's Mercy, where? Where's that at? Yeah, she's on Wesley Main, the Children's Mercy. She's on the PIC unit floor. She's in the pediatric ICU. You can verify it. Oh, okay, so I I'm having difficulty because of your emotional speaking here. But I think my you're talking about Wesley Medical Center in Wichita? Yes, sir. She's on the PIC unit. She's in Children's Mercy. Dr. Scholl is her doctor. Okay. My baby is suffering. All I want to do is see her. That's it. Whatever else y'all want to do. If she died in my orange when she see me, then that's it. That's all I want to see is my baby. That's it, sir. <laughs> Does the state take a position on the request? Please, please. Um, Your Honor, I don't, this is the first I've heard of it. Um, 
I, I, I suppose without any verification, I would have concerns about that. I know her bond is currently set at a hundred thousand with GPS required, um, and that she's only to be in Butler or Sedgwick County. Uh, obviously, Your Honor, I have concerns about um, her being out. Uh, she's got a lot of history out of the state of Iowa. She is I'm presumptive. Um, she's she's at least a C, maybe a B. It kind of depends on how some of her previous convictions shake out. But she's definitely a C. And uh, you know, based on these charges, she's presumptive prison. Um, oh, so I just want to see have concerns. I just want to see. I wrote the I wrote the courts and everything weeks ago. I just want to see her. Right. That's it. The court will first of all make an observation. It seems to be kind of a disturbing tendency out of the women's cell at the Butler County Jail for them to write letters to this court asking for all kinds of things. Ms. Scott, apparently you are one of those that's bought into that. You're not supposed to be even trying to communicate in writing behind the prosecutor's back the way you've been doing. I did. They told when I when I was went to. I asked the person at the jail that's above in the jail. And, I, and so, when you communicate, attempt to communicate with the court, do you also send it to the prosecutor so that she knows what you're doing? Okay. I, I would suspect you don't. I did, and they told me to write straight to the judge mm -hmm. and to my lawyer. All right. Well, all right. Regardless of, of of how any attempted communication may have been sent to my office, uh, Ms. Scott, um, the court is considering here that um, you are facing presumptive prison felonies. You've and now been bound over on those. I promise you, I'm not. And I, don't, I don't mean to be heartless or cruel. I, I don't know if what you're telling the court is legitimate or not. I my, my lawyer, I even gave my lawyer phone numbers and everything to, to verify. I gave him everything to verify. You're a poor risk for a furlough, Ms. Scott. Uh, I don't want to be in a situation where you're released from the jail and we have to recapture you, you. you won't to get you to back. You won't. There are somebody. implications to <laughs> criminal behavior, and you've been bound over on these felonies. The court has found probable cause that you committed these Lord, crimes. You, you haven't been convicted yet. I, the court clearly recognizes that. But again, there are implications to criminal behavior. Miss Scott, and unfortunately, so access to your family can be one of them. The and court is not going to modify your bond in any way, and the court is not going to grant your furlough request. Can so I please the request is denied. My bond? But the court has already considered and denied any bond relief. All right. So if my daughter dies, I can't see her then either. I just want to see her. That's it. All right. Mr. Watts, anything further from your perspective at this time? Not, not at this time, Your Honor. Thank you. From the state's perspective, Ms. Norris? Ms. Norris, please. No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. The uh, Scott matter will currently be in recess. This meeting may be ended for all at this time. OMG. I can't put my face on the screen because I'm an emotional wreck after watching all that. Like, OMG. Like, I, I want to send her money. Let's send her money. Let's get her some contact with her daughter, right? Because... That is horrible, horrible. Can you imagine your child having a brain tumor? But the thing is, it looks like it happened back in 2022 when she had to go fund me up. It's been taken down, so I can't get all the details, but you know, the internet it always leaves breadcrumbs and snapshots and pictures. You can never really erase everything. It looks like she may have had surgery for it. Um, sometime around then in 2022, there's pictures of her having surgery, her daughter. Um, but her daughter posted on Facebook 20, 18 hours ago from now, which would be, I don't know, a week after this hearing actually took place. And it doesn't really sound like she's dying in the hospital. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I've never been dying in the hospital before. I've, I've thought I was dying in the hospital before. Um, gallbladder pain's bad. And I may have said stuff like this, but... I really don't think this is the type of stuff you post when you're in that situation. I could be wrong. Absolute speculation on my part, but I'm just providing you the information that I found. In addition to that, I can tell you that the co-perpetrator, the skinny one, the small skinny one, Elizabeth Rosa Rogers, was arrested just a couple days before this evidentiary hearing. So. 
Wendy, I apparently kept the car, was pulled over that next day, and Elizabeth Rosa Rogers was not apprehended until sometime later, I guess months now. She was charged with kidnapping, aggravated robbery, mistreatment of a dependent elder person, physical injury, confinement, punishment, criminal threat, and theft, all pretty much the same charges as Wendy. Her hearing is not scheduled until December, and that is going to be in front of Judge Hart. So I will keep an eye on this case. I know we don't have a resolution and you all like resolutions, but if I wait until there's a resolution, then you've all seen it on other channels. And my numbers are already the lowest they've been since the second month I started my channel. So please take a moment, like, share, and tell a friend about this because I need to get my numbers back up in order to sustain this channel. And I really appreciate your support. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.